Mm. Great. So welcome, everyone. Great to see you all. The invitation is to share in the chat any experience with your tree if you were able to complete the opportunity for play this past week and, and find a tree to connect with. Um, if you didn't get a chance to, you can share about any tree that you've connected with ever. And uh, look forward to, to reading more of those as, as you may choose to share. And I'm going to invite us to um, go ahead and do a little grounding and a little, uh, little breakout group sharing. And then I'm going to introduce our special guest for today. I'm very, uh, very much looking forward to his presentation and, uh, and info and sharing. So let's go ahead and take a moment to practice quick coherence together once again. So you can have your eyes resting open or you can lower them if you'd like. And starting to notice the flow of the breath. Focus your attention in the area of the heart. Allow your breath to flow in and out of your heart or chest area. Breathing a little slower and a little deeper than usual. Perhaps you'd like to count an inhale of five and an exhale of five or whatever rhythm is comfortable for you. And now make a sincere attempt to experience a regenerative emotion, such as appreciation or care for someone or something in your life. Try to re-experience the feeling of care for someone you love or a pet, a special place or an accomplishment. Or simply invite in a feeling of calm or ease. Focusing your attention in the area of the heart. Slowing the breath down. Inviting in care, ease, appreciation, calm. Taking another couple of slow, deep breaths here in this way. Taking a moment to imagine that we are sitting in a real live circle together. And feeling the hearts of your brothers and sisters around you. And finding if there's any movement that your body is desiring in this moment, letting yourself maybe stretch a little bit or wiggle or shake, twist, 
whatever your body would like listening to your body. And only when you feel ready, allowing your eyes to open once again. Mm -hmm. Thanks everybody. Feels really good to my body to be in that space with you all and know that we get to practice this coming into our hearts together. So thank you. And I want to also offer some gratitude for um, the beautiful ideas that many of you shared in response to the email that I sent out. If there's anything else that comes to mind for anyone, that door remains open. So know that if you have something that you think would be really cool for us to try out here, at any point along the way, just send me, a, send me a message, send me a note. And let's see, I don't think we have anyone new except for our guest. So um, Jonathan, can you give a wave so people see who, who, who you are? <laughs> awesome. I'll give you a proper introduction after, after the breakout groups happen. Um, for anyone who joined, I know there were a couple people who flowed in in the middle of the grounding. I was peeking to let you guys in. I need to figure out how to turn off the waiting room. I don't know why that's still active. I thought I, I thought I shut it off. So sorry about that. Um, but uh, but if anyone else would like to share in the chat any encounters with a tree, the opportunity for play last week was to. Find a tree that could be um, along, along with you during this journey. And uh, so anything that you want to share about that tree that you connected with, or if you didn't get a chance to, you can share about any other tree at any point. And yes, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Oli. I tried to do that. I'll, uh, I'll look again at the waiting room thing. Um, and just to, just to acknowledge Cliff had shared connecting with the eucalyptus tree and hearing um, the, the eucalyptus trees tell them how much they love Cliff. I love that. Thank you so much for sharing. Super sweet. And then Will had shared about connecting with the huge black walnut tree that lives behind um, his house. Wow. Beautiful grounding energy, abundance, lots of squirrels and play and food have consulted with its wisdom and experience and enjoy developing a relationship with it. Thank you for sharing. Awesome, awesome. So I'm gonna um, get us moved into breakout groups so that we can have a minute to um, share with each other. And the invitation for today is to share um, how you are, what's happening for you, what's alive for you, and then did you have a chance to practice quick coherence this week outside of the group space? So if you did practice on your own, then share what that was like for you, what you noticed. If you didn't have a chance, then I'm gonna invite you to share what a strategy might be to help you remember this coming week to give it a go. Your opportunity for play this next seven days is gonna be five minutes of quick coherence every day. So to see like what you could come up with to support yourself in getting to make that happen. Um, so give it a go, try to, try to think about that. And um, I'm going to, let's see, go ahead and actually, so, um, Jonathan, if you could not accept the invitation, then I think we'll have exactly two people per room. 
So that will be perfect. I'll do timing so you guys will be paired up. So just when the invitation um, pops up, if you can just ignore it and stay here with me, Jonathan. Awesome. So I'm going to open these rooms and um, that's okay, Melanie, you can share with Sean and I'm going to pair you guys up <laughs> and then you can d drop into the recording. Um, and so here we go. You have a minute each. It says your bandwidth is low. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, Are we the only ones here? <laughs> yeah, I think everyone else is getting booted in now. <laughs> welcome back. Welcome back. <laughs> Oh my goodness, there's gonna be a really funny part of this, of me um, drinking my smoothie when I sent you guys to the breakout room. I was like timing you and I forgot to pause the recording. <laughs> so if you watch the recording, you'll get to watch me. <laughs> um, awesome, so I hope, I hope that was, um, I hope that was helpful and, and fun to share with each other. Um, I saw there was a group of three. I hope that worked out okay. And um, yeah, so um, Dr. Jonathan Lenahan, I will share. Where are you? You can turn your video back on for us. Um, is a, a dear friend who I had the pleasure of meeting because we adopted um, puppies from the same litter. So our puppies are sisters and um, I really miss little, little Jora Aurora Bear. And I know Mahina misses her as well. They're out in California. And yeah, there she is. <laughs> um, and so, but I, I um, what was so cool about these dogs bringing us together is that um, Jonathan is an incredible, um, incredible healer, doctor, knows so much about the body and healing the body. And I had the great privilege to um, receive, let's see, a couple of acupuncture sessions, as well as um, doing muscle testing for um, anything that was uh, a little bit off with my, with my health. 
and um, going on an herbal uh, supplement detox protocol for some heavy metals that we found out um, were, were kind of part of my experience in my body. And um, I've really, really appreciated Dr. Lenahan's um, way of orienting to coronavirus and what's happening right now and resources that he sent my way around um, staying healthy during this time um, uh, in, the, in the physical body. So a lot of the special guests that I hosted um, for the, the first part of RISE was kind of oriented around um, emotional, mental, and spiritual health. And while I can say that Jonathan is very much grounded in all of those uh, ways of being as well, um, that uh, today I think is gonna be a little bit more focused on the physical body. So I will hand it over to you. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you for joining and, and being able to share your wisdom with our group today. Cool. Thank you, Arya. Um, just a question, if I do this, can you guys still see me? No. Can you guys, oh, you guys can't see me. Okay. We can hear you. But now I'm, I'm back, I'm back yeah. now, right? <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> um, awesome. Well, thank you, Arya, again for having me here. And thank you all for showing up, you know, showing up in your lives and being here and taking the time to, to educate yourselves and to, you know, listen to some information that you might have heard before or maybe some information that you're hearing for the first time. Um, part of what I want to say before I begin um, is like a yoga class and listening to a yoga teacher instruct you on poses or things to do. Um, everything that I'm saying is an imitation and a suggestion, um, but really it's up to all of you to take that information in uh, with an open mind and open heart. And really, I feel like if we all come from this place of dialogue and uh, genuine, authentic communication within ourselves, when we realize that we are all in this together, um, we'll really, I think, heal a lot of the separation and divisiveness that we see in our current society with how uh, polemic our, our political system is and um, topics you know that are that are affecting all of us you know how divisive they can be and so just a gentle reminder to um, always come from a place of uh, open-mindedness and open-heartedness and coming from that place of wanting to really communicate uh, each other's truth and and to or to do that to really be able to also deeply listen to one another I think is super important um, throughout this crisis, you know, throughout these current events that have been happening. Um, so, <clears throat> yeah, with that said, you know, we have a couple of assumptions within our society um, that could be pointed out, you know, that we might not know are very um, heavily influencing our current uh, situation and our current society. Um, and some of them are, say, the themes of consumption. Um, so it's kind of like, what can I get, right? It's always this attitude of like, me, 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 take, 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 what can I get? So there's this consumption attitude. There is a, um, a quick fix. In our society, we're always looking for the quick fixes. So we really never want to get down to the root cause, especially when we're talking about the difference between holistic medicine and Western allopathic medicine. A lot of our um, pharmaceutical industry is driven towards quick, fix quick fixes. Um, there's also the quantity versus quality. So we're all about more versus quality, you know? So that's another thing to be aware of. Um, and then there's always the materialism and the scarcity mentality. Uh, sorry, my dog. 
Um, we have a painter. <laughs> um, so the scarcity and materialism mentality, right? So when this whole thing first happened, like that's the first thing we heard, you know, everyone just freaks out, goes to the grocery store, like Black Friday, runs over each other, mean to each other, grabs all the toilet paper so no one has any more toilet paper. Um, so there's this scarcity mentality. And then there's a um, form of reductionism in our society. So we're always conditioned from a very young age and within our school systems to reduce things. And this comes from more of a uh, Western analytical method um, of reductionism to reduce things to their parts and to isolate them. And um, that is one way of thinking. And it's really great in order to understand mechanism and how things work. And the scientific method is this beautiful example of that. But to know that that is a uh, paradigm in which our current society uh, operates in um, and isn't necessarily the, the, the biggest picture or the biggest kind of perspective we can take on reality and on life, um, especially when it comes to the holistic medicine, which would be the opposite of reductionism because we're not separating things and isolating them into their you know, infinitesimal parts. We're actually seeing systems and functions working in the body and interrelation interdependence uh, and unity really uh, how does the body the mind and the spirit operate as a whole and um, I I didn't print my notes so I'm gonna have to they're on my iPad so I'm gonna have to <laughs> make sure I hit all my talking points <laughs> um, okay Yeah, so with that said, um, I think the first thing that I would like to bring to our attentions is uh, the virus of fear. So maybe all of you can take a moment to just think about that within yourselves. What does that even mean, a virus of fear, you know? And... Um, so much of our thinking and thoughts are, are conditioned to see something physically. And yet, a lot of what's controlling our spirit and our freedom, our mind, is invisible. And so, what does this virus of fear mean to you? And how have you seen it operating within your family, within your community, within society at large? would be a question that I'd like to ask everyone to just really take a moment to think about. And we see fear in the future, right? Which is anxiety. So anxiety, um, you see a, almost like a health anxiety. So we see, um, like the hypochondriac kind of symptoms. We see some germophobia symptoms within our society as well. And when you think about fear in the past, we get depression. We get a, a sense of loneliness. Uh, feeling separated, separated from one another. And then ultimately, there's that fear of the unknown, of uncertainty, fear of death, our own death, our own health, uh, losing loved ones, losing friends. So <clears throat> these are forces that are very real in our current situation that um, I've been able to really see and and I wouldn't even take the attitude that they're a negative thing 
so much as they're happening and they're showing us something deep within our collective consciousness. Um, <clears throat> and ultimately asking us to step up and to, and to be more or to do something different if what our old behavior, behavioral patterns and our old ways of being weren't working for us, right? So having all those things in mind, let's just take a second to send love to our collective, to everyone who you may know even personally in your life, who may be suffering from anxiety, from depression, from suicidal thoughts or loneliness or um, a type of hypochondriac like germ phobia anxiety ridden state of mind so let's just send that love to ourselves most importantly for our own shadows and also to everyone else in society at large And I like to do this by focusing my awareness into my heart center, my Anahata Chakra, and creating and visualizing a glowing golden orb of pink and gold light coming from my heart center and then shooting in every single direction out across the planet or bubbling up out encompassing my neighborhood and then growing out into the city of San Diego and then growing out through all of California and then reaching all 50 states and then going beyond the U.S., going across the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans and just spreading that love out to every single country, every continent on this planet until the entire planet Earth is covered in this beam and pink gold globe of light. And so when you're ready, you can open your eyes after sending that love out to everyone. And so to continue, I'm just going to briefly state a few facts that I've gathered. And um, I'm just gonna state them matter-of-factly and everyone can draw their own conclusions from that. Um, you might not be able to see me real quick because I'm gonna read these facts off for you guys. Um, but yeah, one of the things that really I wanted to research about the coronavirus and our current situation, um, and I wanted to put it in perspective of, of the flu virus that we're all familiar with and that has affected um, us every year, you know, with seasonal flu epidemics. So I wanted to just read off their similarities for you guys. So last year, around 61,000 people in the US died of the flu last year. And flu season is considered to start in, say, November and um, end in May. So last year's November 2018 ended in May of 2019 is considered that that time period uh, flu season. Um, so we're just kind of coming out of our own typical flu season now as we just entered uh, the month of May. And as of now around 
uh, 55,000 people have died from COVID-19. Uh, and this is coming from John Hopkins Data University. Um, and from what I confer from their data graphs, um, cases seem to have peaked around April 12th, 2019, and are now steadily in decline. Um, for instance, uh, during that day, for instance, in total U.S., uh, you had around 17,000 uh, people who died um, on that day, uh, compared to now, or compared to May uh, 2nd, uh, you only had 200 deaths. So there seems to be, in terms of the graphs um, overall in the U.S., a dramatic decline now, as this virus has now peaked and it's now slowly declining as herd immunity is building up and more and more people have now been exposed to this virus. So uh, both cause fever, cough, body aches, and fatigue, sometimes vomiting and diarrhea, and uh, it can be mild or severe and even fatal in some cases, as we've seen. Uh, it can also result in pneumonia. So everything I'm saying is true of both the flu and of COVID-19. Uh, both can be spread from person to person through droplets in the air, uh, from an infected person coughing, sneezing, or talking. Both can be spread by an infected person for several days before their symptoms appear. Uh, neither virus is treatable with antibiotics which only work on bacterial infections. Both are treated by addressing symptoms, such as reducing fever. Uh, severe cases may require hospitalization and support, such as mechanical ventilation. Both may be prevented by frequent thorough hand washing, um, not openly coughing into the air, staying home when sick, and limiting contact with people who are infected. Uh, COVID-19 is a mutated coronavirus strain called SARS-CoV-2. And the flu has four main types, A, B, C, and D. A and B types are responsible for flu season. Uh, antiviral medications are used to address symptoms for both the flu and COVID-19. Um, and there is a flu vaccine, of course. Uh, people are told to get their flu vaccine every year. Uh, but there's no current vaccine for COVID-19. So um, continuing the, the similarities between the two, uh, I found this article on just the flu. And they named three reasons for why some people die of the flu and why others are okay. And so the first reason is contracting a secondary infection like pneumonia that leads to organ failure or respiratory failure. Uh, two would be the immune system is already compromised by another illness, such as diabetes, asthma, chronic lung issues, and of, as we know, many elderly people fall into this group. And the third reason um, is, you know, why do healthy people die of the flu? Um, and that is uh, what happens is their immune system overreacts and the body may increase the immune defenses so much that infection fighting proteins build up in the blood and damage other organs. And I believe this is called a cytokine reaction. Um, and so for example, you can get this immune response in the lungs, which turn, in turn makes it hard to breathe. Um, and then eventually, you know, you could die from that. So so that is just a brief synopsis of the similarities between COVID-19 and the flu. And the last, that the last thing I read to you guys was an article in the beginning of December, I believe of this year, about, about the flu and why do some people die and others are okay. And 
<clears throat> what stood out to me from from doing that research, you know, of course, um, the flu virus comes from the A and B strains, you know, and uh, COVID-19 comes from this mutated um, coronavirus called SARS-CoV-2. So they are different in what they are in terms of their, their viral components. Um, I was really struck by the similarities of both of them, uh, by the statistics of both of them, and by everything we're being told now about COVID-19 in terms of, um, you know, like uh, why some people die and some people are okay is, is true for, for the flu as well. And um, so I'll just leave that at that and let you guys have that information to just take in and make your own decisions from, from that information. Um, let's see. Okay. And I'd kind of like to get into more of now possible energetic, uh, mental, emotional components of, of what we're seeing happening here and what happens in general when we get sick. So, um, for instance, um, I did get really, really, really sick um, for one day in, in March, and it could have been part of this uh, detox program that I was doing, or maybe it could have been the coronavirus. I'm not sure, you know. Um, and so, yeah, for one day, I had body aches, chills, and like fever throughout my body. I couldn't move. I literally slept in bed my whole day. I could only get up to like barely like wobble out of my bed to go to the bathroom and then um, to uh, drink water and to hydrate and to take Chinese herbs, you know, to get better. Um, And I had this moment, you know, um, and this goes back to mindset. Um, and what are the mental, emotional correlates to physical illness? And so there's that part of us that says, like, why is this happening to me? Like, why me? Like, I don't deserve this. So we, we first tend to play this victim role when we get sick. Or like, why? <laughs> you know, like, I, I've had enough, you know, this all the mental you know, excuses that we make that like we don't want to deal with the current situation that we find our bodies in. And um, and somewhere along the line, there's this shift, this energetic, mental, emotional shift that happened to me. And so the shift was um, instead of playing this victim role, being sick and feeling like really ill and having feeling all this pain in my body, Um, I started thinking, um, you know, maybe this virus or this sickness is going to um, make my immune system even stronger than what it was, you know, and it's going to act as a a cleaning out of all the other junk that's been building up in my system over the past year, you know, and so I started actually uh, rethinking about my my symptoms and started like shifting it as like oh yeah like these things are gonna benefit me like a lot like I'm gonna get way better from this it's going to like my fever is gonna burn up all the other toxic toxins in my body and clear it out of my body you know and I kind of um, came to this place of patience with myself and acceptance you know and even more than acceptance, even embracing my sickness, like really just embracing it fully, embracing the pain, embracing the the constant diarrhea, <laughs> embracing all of it, you know, and just being okay with it. And um, and it's just so interesting to see how your mindset 
can really, really shift your experience of being sick. And currently, I think in our modern society, we're not taught how to um, be patient with ourselves anymore, how to relax, how to allow the body to heal. Um, um, and to really be sick with some ease and grace instead of kicking and screaming the whole time. Um, which in a lot of ways, if we are kicking and screaming the whole time, that's what the energetic, emotional, mental correlate I would postulate would be towards why healthy individuals have a overreaction within their immune response and why they have this cytokine overflow buildup, um, which eventually uh, makes them even worse and can lead to death. You know, that's why healthy, supposed healthy individuals have died from both the flu and from COVID-19 is from this um, overreaction within their immune system that, that happens in the lungs, it restricts the airway passages. And before you know it, you have to be put on a, a ventilator because Western medicine doesn't know what else to do. So, so that's something definitely to become aware of. And uh, a friend of mine, she had some also some really beautiful, uh, what I would call vibrational frequency uh, mindset affirmations. And so I would love to read them all out to you right now. And so using um, positive frequency affirmations is another great way to kind of address more of the mental, emotional, um, biological mechanisms that are related to viruses, to sickness in general, whenever we feel, you know, imbalanced and out of, out of harmony with our own bodies. So I'm going to read them to you and feel free to copy them down if you want and they're on the recording so um, so these are positive fre frequency affirmations to heal symptoms so with fever what you can say is I am the cool and calm expression of peace and love. So again, dealing with the symptoms of fever, I am the cool and calm expression of peace and love. And now dealing with grief in the lungs, I have the capacity to take in the fullness of life I lovingly live life to its fullest. So again, grief in the lungs. I have the capacity to take in the fullness of life. I lovingly live life to its fullest. Dealing with cold, congestion, mental confusion, disorder, too many things going on at once, anxiety. So this frantic energy that we were feeling at the height of April, the middle of April, I would say, collectively, there was a lot of mental confusion, disorder, it just felt like we were lost. Uh, There's so much anxiety, you know, happening. Um, so what you can say for this is, I allow my mind to relax and be at peace. Clarity and harmony are within me and all around me, all is well. Again, I allow my mind to relax and be at peace. Clarity and harmony are within me and all around me, all is well. And for mass negativity, that you feel from others' judgments or you find yourself approval seeking. Um, you know, there's a lot of social shaming that is happening now. <laughs> 
Um, so feeling that that energy of, of social shaming and feeling the negative judgments of others uh, or that peer pressure, you can say, I am beyond group beliefs. I am free of all congestion and influence. I love and approve of myself. Earth is a safe place to be. Again, I am beyond group beliefs. I am free of all congestion and influence. I love and approve of myself. Earth is a safe place to be. And so also following up with these frequency, positive frequency affirmations, I would say holistic medicine utilizes meditation, art therapy, sacred movement, shamanic journeying, plant medicine, acupuncture, massage, energy medicine, and breath work. These are all ways to become more aware of energetic, mental, and emotional blocks within the body and mind. And they all can bring a deeper awareness into the body and mind and connect us to source energy to bring about physical transformation and healing. So, um, yeah, that is in a way holistic medicine in a nutshell. And what we're trying to accomplish and all those modalities I listed um, to me would be uh, step one, you know. And we're going to get more now into the physical um, Chinese medicine herbal formulas that we can actually use to address um, uh, viral attacks and viral infections within the body. But I first wanted to give everyone a really good kind of general big overview of holistic medicine. And when we say holistic medicine, we have to address, of course, we're addressing the body as a whole system. Um, we're addressing the minds and the emotions and how that affects the body. Um, and how they can really powerfully, uh, the mind and the emotions can heal the physical body as well as destroy it. Um, and this all comes back to our spirit, to our consciousness, to our awareness, which I use uh, synonymously. Um, you know, and you have to bring the awareness back into the body. So you have to embody awareness and all these modalities whether it's art therapy sacred movement doing qigong uh, doing mindful practices meditation uh, getting a massage getting energy work done getting cranial sacral getting reiki getting pranic healing getting theta healing i can name them all um, the goal is to draw our consciousness back into our body, back into our organs, back into our heart, our lungs, our stomach, you know, because what we don't realize is we operate, and this isn't normal, actually, it's only normal in this society, but we operate from just here, just here, and it's always externalized, and we're always just looking outside of ourselves. We're always thinking, if I just do this thing, if I just do, but really true healing and awareness, and this is one of the pillars of holistic medicine that I would say is anything you do, if it draws your awareness and your consciousness, your spirit back into your body, into your skin, into your bones, into all seven trillion cells, into your DNA, into your organs, that's where real magic is going to happen. That's where there's going to be um, the potential for like a quantum shift in the body, a quantum energetic shift. 
and transformation in the body. And once the body has a different frequency and vibration that it then aligns to with that new consciousness that comes into the body, then the physical body will start dancing and harmonizing and realigning around that energetic vibration and frequency that you've now kind of downloaded into your cells and into your DNA. So um, let's see what else I wanted to address real quick. <clears throat> cool so i was also thinking about the energetic components of antibodies of our t cells our macrophages which are the immune system fighters and um i love uh metapoetics which is like getting a deeper understanding uh of words meaning of words through um, how they appear and sound phonetically. Um, so <laughs> uh, immune system or immunity, right? And I was looking at immunity as I was writing it down. And in a way you could say immunity is I am unity. <laughs> so immunity means I am unity. Um, and that is really, really cool because actually, physiologically, there is no immune system in the body. You know, we have a cardiovascular system. We can open the body up and we can see our blood vessels. We can see our hearts. We can actually see a physical system operating in the body, right? But when it comes to the immune system, there is actually, it's your whole body is the immune system there is no separate system within the body that is the immune system everything in your body is the is the immune system so you you are it you know and so i thought that was really cool that immunity comes back down to i am unity and taking that powerful um, affirmation and coming with that awareness i think is honestly going to protect you more from coronavirus than any amount of social distancing or quarantining or mask wearing or glove wearing you know so um i think that is a very powerful energetic frequency to hold within your your yourself um and within your aura within your electromagnetic fields outside of your body and and to know that your immune system is stronger than you've ever been taught to believe <laughs> and if you can believe in your immunity you can come with a, a sense of high immunity consciousness i think <clears throat> that is going to be very healing and that is going to physically boost your immune system boost your macrophages boost your t-cells Activate your thymus gland that creates the antibodies to tag germs, and your overall health is going to increase from that state of awareness. <clears throat> Let me see. And so now I want to get into um, kind of more of the nitty gritty details of TCM, traditional Chinese medicine. So, as you know, I am a doctor of acupuncture Chinese medicine and uh, I specialize in my healing practice called Acu Shaman the integration of acupuncture and energy medicine what is really cool is that the history of Chinese medicine is thousands and thousands of years old and so <clears throat> you know it's not our first rodeo with dealing with uh, epidemics, especially viral infectious disease epidemics that have through the history and as we know through our own history, you know, through like the Spanish plague or the, no, uh-oh. We're, we're at the hour, love. So Kim, can you share this in a condensed way and, um, and about um, the- Yeah, I think I'm almost done. That you have, yeah. awesome, awesome. Maybe like 15 minutes, is that cool? Ooh, okay. okay. No, oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so- um, If you can gosh, hop right- Just getting into the good stuff. I know, I know. If you can hop to how people- yeah. so That's what I'm doing you right now. Awesome. 
Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, <laughs> so <clears throat> very quickly. <clears throat> okay. So in Chinese medicine, you have four pathogenic levels, um, according to the Wen Bing Lun, which is a traditional Chinese text to deal with viral infections or infectious disease. You have a, um, the Wei Qi level, which is the protective level. You have the Qi level, you have the Ying level, which is the nutritive level, and you have the Shui level, which is the blood level. And so a great metaphor for this is prophylactically, preventively, right, to boost your immune system, you could take vitamin C, vitamin A, vitamin D. And I'll let you guys on your own do the research to know that these are all great immune boosting vitamins and nutrients. You can be eating healthy, right? Instead of your broccoli, I mean, instead of your Big Mac, you have some broccoli, you know, something like that. So these things we all know, if you're sick, no sugars, no dairy, no fried food, right? Lots of rest, lots of soups, lots of ginger teas, echinacea teas, uh, bone broths, you know, all these things to clean out any uh, bacteria or viruses from the body. Um, a couple of recommendations in terms of Chinese medicine is something called jade windscreen powder, yu ping fang san. So jade windscreen powder is a great immune booster formula. It contains only three herbs. Uh, one of the main ones we all are more familiar with now uh, called astragalus or huang qi in Chinese medicine. And so, um, yeah, astragalus, um, uh, baiju, and fang feng are the other two herbs, and they're all both really good immune-boosting immune uh, herbs. And so that's what you would use in terms of, I'm going to give you guys a metaphor so you can understand the levels. So basically... Here's what we're gonna you know, do. Doing the I know there's a little delay on my side. Here's what we're gonna do. I have another call I have to hop into, but there are some people it sounds like that wanna stay for this part. So I'm gonna keep the recording going. I'm gonna let you guys close out. Jonathan, you can close the group. And that way the okay. people who wanna stay can stay. And then anybody who needs to go can catch the recording because this is really juicy, really valuable information. I wanna I know, I'm like getting to the <laughs> so, um, so that's the plan. And, um, and that way, anybody who needs to hop off now, send some love to Jonathan. Thank you, thank you. Amazing, amazing. And um, I'll be back in to end it when I see that you guys have, have closed up. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, Aria. Cool. All right, I'll see you guys You're next welcome. week. I'll send an email out. Um, well. Lots of love. <laughs> Okay. So yeah, so giving your body the nutrition it needs, giving your body these um, herbs that are really good to boost your immune system is kind of like having scouts um, outside of your land that deal with any enemy invaders, right? So you have scouts patrolling your borders of your land, the borders, the terrain of your body, and um, any pathogens, any viruses, any bacteria that they find, they like, they're super awesome, super troop scouts. They just take them out then and there. They have, you know, you've given uh, your body the, the weapons that they need for your soldiers to so just be prepared and boom, they take out any invaders. Um, so that would be just like the prophylactic level. Okay, so now we're gonna go into the Wei Qi level according to the Wen Bing Moon. So the Wei Qi level, is like having enemies outside of your walls, outside of the city. So um, at that point, <clears throat> we use another Chinese herbal formula called uh, Yin Chao San. Um, and maybe I can type it in the uh, text for you guys. Yin Chao San. And so that is a really great formula and symptoms of the enemy, enemy being outside of your walls, right? According to your own immune system would be when you're starting to first show symptoms of headache, of cough, of sore throat, of swollen tonsils. This is when the enemy is outside of your walls. This is the way chi level or the protective level. And this is the level in which you want to just take out the enemy right then and there. You don't want to mess around. You want to take some more heavy hitting antiviral herbs at this point. 
uh, and Yin Chao San has some good antiviral, um, uh, anti-inflammatory, immunostimulant uh, herbs in them to uh, basically just take out any enemy invaders, any uh, pathogens, you know, any viruses. Um, so Yin Chao San is great. That is the, the Wei Qi level. The next level would be uh, what we call the, the Qi level. Um, so this is the energetic level. This is, is if the, the virus or the enemy is now climbing the walls, they're trying to break down the gate. And so what's going to happen is you're going to have a high, high fever happening in your body. Um, you could probably have other symptoms. Let's see. <clears throat> Give me one sec. Yeah, so high fever, cough with yellow mucus, and having asthma or difficulty breathing, and a lot of thirst. Um, this is, you know, this is more serious. So the formulas I use is Vi Viola, I'm going to type them in for you, Viola Clear Fire, and G uh, formulas, which are some of the most powerful Chinese herbal formulas that I know of that I've been using um, my whole life that just are super, super antiviral herbal formulas. And they will literally kill. They're like the heavy hitters. And so they can kill pretty much anything. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm pretty, pretty, you know, confident in saying that they can take out, you know, any type of coronavirus, the BioClear Fire and the Puji formulas. And so that's dealing with the virus, say, is if you were getting worse and uh, your fever was getting more intense. And I would even say that if you wanted to, you could just take those formulas as soon as you feel like you have a sore throat. So you could even not even mess with Yin Chao San because we are dealing with a more aggressive and uh, like a uh, resistant strain of coronavirus. The SARS-CoV-2 is a very uh, strong um, strain. Um, and so you might not just want to mess around. And at this point, you know, like vitamin C isn't going to do the job. You need Viola Clear Fire and Puji and they will do the job for you. And so there are two more levels those levels we don't really deal with so much in holistic medicine because at that point, hospitalization is needed and all of the symptoms can be going towards more of a uh, fatal situation um, where hospitalization would re be required, where there's symptoms of blood, coughing up of blood and all these things. So you just don't want to let the enemies break down the gate. You don't want to let them inside <laughs> the body to wreak havoc on the street, you know, and and so the last level, you know, which is the Shui level, which is like the enemies are literally like throughout your city now and they're at the keep and they're now shutting down your organs. You know, they're shutting down your respiratory system. They're shutting down your heart. Um, and that's something that just for the sake of you knowing the different levels, that's how we categorize them in Chinese medicine in dealing with infectious disease. Uh, so I hope that was helpful. Um, and then let's see, uh, acupuncture points that I use for boosting the immune system are, let's see, and I'll show you, I'll show you them on my body. So for immune system support lung nine right here. So a lot of times if I'm just like bored and I want to boost my immune system, I either use my index finger or my third finger um, and I go right onto my lung nine and you can also do this with essential oils so you can use uh, rosemary clove cinnamon any citrus oils uh, eucalyptus you could just do a dab of that you can dilute it in coconut oil and you can do some aromatherapy acupressure and energetic boosting of your immune system through lung nine both sides on the thumb side, right below the, the crease of your wrist. You can actually feel your radial pulse here. So lung nine is great. And then also 
right here. Uh, there's this like crook on the inside medial side and right below that crook is uh, spleen five. And you can feel it by shifting your foot back and forth like this. You'll feel a bone stick out when you extrovert your foot. And then you know you're right here on spleen five. So lung nine and spleen five are the points for immune system boosting. They're really good for any colds or flus. Um, and a little more uh, serious points that I would use, this is with like sore throat with like deep, you know, you hear people cough and you like can hear like there's like deep seated mucus like stuck in their lungs, you know? <laughs> They're like, that doesn't sound good, <laughs> you know? So you wanna do uh, lung five. So you take the elbow crease here. And so if you flex your arm, you'll feel this tendon, this really like crazy tendon. And you go to the outside of that tendon towards the outside of your body, off to the outside of that tendon right there. So this way, so not this way, but this way. Um, so this is lung five and I literally will take my thumb and just like acupressure squeeze this. Um, I have a really cool story with that. I was on an airplane ride and the person next to me was like hacking up the entire time. And I told her to just start pressing lung five and she literally stopped coughing the entire plane ride. I was like, Oh, thank God. Like, you know, <laughs> you know, but it was just really nice that that really helped her too. And so lung five is gonna get rid of any deep-seated mucus that's trapped in your respiratory system. <clears throat> and then another great one to press down is large intestine or LI4. So LI4 is going to be, if you make this little like thing with your hand, you see there's a valley mound right there between my thumb and index finger. It's right above this crease and it's right there so that's large intestine four and again you can just take your thumb and massage up and down this whole pad here and on a lot of people it's really tender and this is a really good um like heat clearing point for fevers or anything like that i think it as well uh we use this with another point i'll show you to a boost uh white blood cell counts in the body so this is, I believe, going to also boost your T cells, your macrophages, your white blood cells. Using LI4, it's also going to um, reduce any type of fever symptoms or like sore throat, you know, any type of heat symptoms in the body. So LI4 and, and right here, this is uh, stomach 36. So basically you go down your knee bones and you feel your, there's the knee, which is the first hump. So one hump, and you have this other hump here, two hump. <laughs> and then you just go down an inch from that second hump and then off right off to the side of your shin bone here, to the lateral side of your shin bone. And this is stomach 36. So this has been shown in clinical studies to boost white blood cells in the body. So right there. So you have your knee hump, knee hump, that little hump there. You go down one inch and then off to the side, right off from your shin bone and that's stomach 36. So all these points can be used energetically. You can do energy work on them. You can also use aromatherapy, uh, like the ones I mentioned. Uh, and use them all in combination and those are also those are all really powerful points for the immune system uh, that I would use if patients came in with uh, a cold or a flu or even if I ever get sick with a cold or flu I'm always needling myself in those points that I just told you guys about um, and let's see anything else So just to um, sum up, I'll keep this short because I know we're over hey, Jonathan, time. Jonathan, do you mind sharing how long to hold these and does it matter which side? Yeah, great question. Um, so I would always hold each point bilaterally and you could hold for, I mean, it 
it can really start happening as quick i would say one minute one minute on each each point yeah that's a good number but i would say within 24 seconds um those energy centers in your body are going to be stimulated and activated within 24 seconds uh to one minute for sure and then so you can either gently hold it and just like use your breath to breathe from three deep inhales to six deep inhales to nine deep inhales. Or you can be a little more aggressive. And you, that's when I take my thumb and I'll just go in and out and I'll press really hard for like three seconds. So one, two, three, press hard. One, two, three, lift off. One, two, three, press hard. One, two, three, slowly lift. One, two, three, press. One, two, three, lift. So you can do this nice in and out motion too to more aggressively stimulate the nerve centers in the body. Thank you for that question. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, just to sum up, you know, um, we're told that, you know, our, our society is scared because we're told that Western medicine doesn't have any drugs or any vaccine yet for this COVID-19. And I would like to pose the question, like, is that even the best approach, you know? Yeah. And, and in terms of a holistic medicine paradigm, I, I would say no, I would say that there are really, really amazing Chinese herbal formulas that have been time tested through 1000s of years to treat infectious disease. Um, like the ones I just mentioned by old clear fire and Puji. Uh, and you can find those on my website too, if you want to order them at accushaman.com. Um, but they're from a really good company called Golden Flower Herbs. And so, yeah, we have these really good formulas. I would say, you know, you can't just address the symptoms. You have to fix the root cause. And I think that's what this crisis is showing us is that Americans' health are in not a good state. And we need to be eating organic foods and vegetables, getting exercise, you know, cutting out refined sugar. You know, we need to be doing these things to like overall make us feel better, to like make us feel healthy so that, you know, <clears throat> we have a prophylactic response, you know, a preventative response to infectious disease. And we're not waiting for the enemies to be at our gates, you know, or to overclimb the walls. We shouldn't even get to that point because holistic medicine is about preventative medicine. And so really when holistic medicine is working, it's like, you're not even getting sick, you know, because your body, your immune system is so strong. It's just taking out any virus or bacteria even before a full immune response is necessary from your body. So that's something to be aware of. And um, I would just say to, I had a couple more things I was going to go through with the, the body, the mind, the emotions, our environment and our spirit. But I think I covered those pretty well already. And so I'll just sum up by saying, like, throughout this crisis, of course, I went through my own personal ups and downs, and I was trying to figure it out all out for myself. And the first, during the first quarantine weeks, like, I confess, I was probably, like, not eating the best, and it was, like, kind of indulging in my old behaviors, you know, and eating lots of sugary things and too much coffee and all these things and probably binge watching Netflix or something like that and just saturating yourself in media and um, I ended up doing a 21 day detox you know like you know no refined sugars eating fruits and vegetables exercising every day meditating doing mindful practices um, lessening my uh, media exposure and all that and so what I came through from all of that is the attitude i think of forgiveness is really important um and with forgiveness it's not that we condone the behavior of others but we um we don't hold on to like any anger or resentment um, and i think that was really important for me especially as a holistic medicine practitioner like i see how 
how I would do things. And I, I know that's not how other people would respond because they don't maybe have the 10 years of education that I've dedicated in my life to Chinese medicine. And they don't have that education, so they don't know any better. But sometimes it's really hard for me to like see what's happening in our society and hear the things that we're told are supposed to, you know, we're just waiting for a vaccine and drug and just knowing there's way more things that we can do preventively to boost our immune system and to, to deal with coronavirus. Um, and so, yeah, uh, attitude of forgiveness and compassion, uh, like I mentioned before, open heartedness, I think is really important. Um, just being open to different perspectives, you know, hearing both the perspectives of the people who are really gung ho on all the things that we are supposed to be, you know, that our government is telling us to do. And then other, other sides of the story, I think is really important to have that open dialogue um you know to again remember that we're all in this together and to really come from that that place instead of like oh i'm right she's wrong like you know um attitude you know so yeah i'll just leave us with that like take the 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 archetype of the sage you know the sage is the archetype of someone who knows that things come and go and this too shall pass and um, and the big picture, you know, constantly zoom out your consciousness, you know, and see the bigger picture at play, what's happening, like, what is the universe, what is great spirit, its message, what is Mother Earth's message to humanity at this time? Um, um, and I think with that perspective, with that attitude, um, we'll we'll be able to rise to the occasion, we'll be as healthy as possible, and we'll be able to deal with anything that's thrown, you know, at us, you know, whether it's a virus or a mental virus, you know, or whatever that is, you know, so um, thank you guys for staying and listening to this chat and um, appreciate you all. So I hope you guys got stuff out of it. I was trying to, you know, there's so much and I really wanted to, to give you a holistic medical perspective and acupuncture and Chinese herbal medicine is just one small, uh, one small part of that whole picture, you know, that you would use that I would use for my patients in order to help them get better. So, um, yeah, thank you all again. So, any questions? If anyone wants to stay, they can ask me a question. So. How do we get a full perspective? Say that again. How do we get a more full perspective on what what you would do? Cool. Yeah, was that helpful with the four levels and like the metaphor of the the city walls and the gates? Yeah. Yeah, it was really helpful. Cool. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I have a question about TC. Is there like a book? that you recommend for someone who wants to start learning about this? But yeah. Um, <laughs> gosh, which, um, there's a really good book called The Spark in the Machine. And I could type it out too in the chat. Um, I had a question. Yeah. Um, again, you said uh, when people have a really strong immune system that, what's that called again, the response where they get really sick just because yeah, they, have, yeah, they have antibody protein buildup in their body, which then uh, makes it difficult to breathe. Uh, it's called, yes. I believe, the cytokine reaction. Cytokine, okay. Thank With you. a C, like C-Y. Cyto cytokine okay yeah. very good you're welcome I have a question about the vitamin C A and D yeah I'm wondering what form you would recommend taking that in and what dosage 
Yes. Um, so I highly recommend uh, two companies. One is called Protocol for Life Balance. And they have, a, they have the best vitamin C that I've muscle tested all my patients for. Uh, their vitamin C contains uh, like riboflavonoids and some other really cool rootin factors in it, as well as the ascorbic acid. So they have really good, to me, I basically go to health food stores and I test all the vitamin Cs. And then I figure out what are the best companies that have the best quality products. And so Protocol for Life Balance has a really good vitamin C. Um, for the vitamin uh, D and uh, something called, uh, basically they're called cataplexes because they're whole food vitamins, uh, cataplex uh, D and cataplex AC. You're going to get some C and mostly some A, vitamin A, by standard process. And they're a whole food nutrition company. And so basically that's another big deal within the holistic medicine paradigm is you don't just isolate vitamins. Like, so in Western, uh, you know, we have these things called nutraceuticals, right? So it's basically um, the same mentality that Western medicine takes with drugs, with pharmaceuticals, applying it to nutrition, creating nutraceuticals. And again, they're just isolating the vitamin and saying, this is the, the thing. This, we're, we're going to just isolate the vitamin D and this is going to be like the thing that helps the body. And that's not necessarily true. So if you can actually um, take a whole food and um, keep all of its uh, synergists, like so all the other different uh, components, the minerals and the nu nutrients with that vitamin D or vitamin A intact, then you're going to have a more complete vitamin versus just the isolated, um, you know, nutraceutical vitamin, which to me makes it less bioavailable for the body. So the body is not able to metabolize it as well and utilize it as well. So those are my two recommendations. You can also get a good calcium lactate, uh, which is lactate is the best form of calcium. So calcium lactate um, by standard process two is great for reducing fevers, uh, but it's also calcium has been shown to be really good for the immune system as well. Um, so having enough calcium in your blood is going to help fight off any viruses or bacteria as well. Um, so yeah, those would be my recommendations for that. Thank you. You're welcome. And I wrote them in the chat too. Um, yeah, and if you guys are interested, if you would ever want me to help you set up an account with standard process, because usually a licensed practitioner um, can get them, um, you could always email me. Uh, I'll send, I'll give you my email. Uh, info. Uh, Com. You can email me or go to my website. Um, and I do have, I'm starting to create now a online um, medicine cabinet <laughs> kit for people. So right there, I have some of the antiviral herbal formulas I recommended uh, that are my go-tos that I have on that online store there. And then um, I didn't get to put up the other things yet, but if you email me, we can set up an account for, with standard process with you, and then you can order it, and they drop ship it right to your house. The Cataplex uh, AC, the calcium lactate, um, and the Cataplex D you could get from them. Um, and then if you wanted some further recommendations, I have some like, they make a really good supplement called Thymex. So that helps to activate the thymus gland in the body. And the thymus is really important for creating the antibodies to deal with any uh, infections. And so to have a working thymus gland is really nice because 
means your immune system can respond appropriately and really identify the virus and then tag it with the antibody so that your macrophages and your T cells can can eat it up. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Alrighty, I'm gonna go now. Any last I'll take one more question if there is one more question. Very good. Okay. Anyways, have a great day guys. Keep healthy, keep strong. So hmm. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you so much. You're awesome, man. Thank you, everybody.